a good zinger here. Um, the 60, uh, I live in Huntington Park, which is about four miles south of uh, downtown, uh, but it's uh, culturally very different than the downtown we know today. It's um, pretty much a working class uh, Latino neighborhood. And I'm a very rare blue eyes white guy in that neighborhood, very rare. But um, I was on the bus with everybody else, still carry my tap card with me. And in the, um, in the 1980s, the buses were different. Um, they were just, it was, they were flat. When you, once you walked up the steps, it was just a very flat stretch all the way to the back. That was it. There wasn't these stairs. There wasn't the, the funky wheelchair thing. I don't know what they did for wheelchairs, to tell you the truth. I, I, I don't recall. They didn't have bike racks in the front. This, this is the Stone Age. And so, um, hey, I'm, uh, I'm on the bus. My neighborhood, by the time it's come from Long Beach through Huntington Park on its way to Skid Row, it goes through the mentally ill part of Skid Row, where the, there's a lot of mentally ill housing. Um, there's a lot of cleaning ladies on. In fact, there's no cleaning ladies on these days. In the 80s, there were, but back then, it was a lot of cleaning ladies. So inevitably, you would get on the bus where I was, and there would be, especially any time before noon, there would be mops. You'd just see five or six mops along the way, down the aisle, and my preferred place to sit is directly in the back, the last seat in the middle. Either window's okay, but I really, I'm a, I'm a backseater. Um, I actually think it's the safest place on the bus. And all the shit I've ever seen go down, and we're gonna get to it in just a minute, has gone down kind of in the middle of the bus by that exit door. So I like to get way past that. The front, eh, the middle, ugh. back, no problem. So um, one day, I, just, I remember this very vividly. Um, the windows, I have to describe the windows, they, they were ovals and they w went like this. So when you opened a window and you opened this window, you still had a big pane of basically two pieces of glass and then enough space that you really couldn't, I mean, you couldn't push a baby out of there, maybe an infant, but you couldn't push your, you couldn't throw your kid out of the bus. You certainly couldn't jump out of the bus. So um, that was the windows at the time. And I remember it was, it was really weird. Most of the windows were open. It was a hot day and the uh, air conditioner wasn't working. And, um, the language is predominantly Spanish, and I hear some people, and they're going at it. They're going at it. And the woman stands up with her mop and starts smacking another woman. And this woman jumps up, and she has her mop, but she ends up grabbing the mop, the woman's mop, and throwing it out the open window. And all the windows are open, and then the other woman is trying to grab her mop. She's, she's not hitting her anymore. She's trying to grab her mop to throw it out the window. And um, one mop made it out the window. And then finally, when the stop came, the woman had to get off to, to go get her mop because she had to go to work and she had to take her mop. And so that's kind of like the, the working class nature of the 60. But, but nowadays, when I, whenever I'm on the 60, I never see cleaning ladies anymore. And I think cleaning ladies, it's, I think the economy's actually contracted down over the years to the point that now a cleaning lady is a middle-class job. At the time, that was like, you know, but now, hey, you're a cleaning lady, wow, you're, you're doing good. You know, you're making a couple hundred bucks uh, here, a couple hundred bucks there. So I, I, I think the cleaning ladies are all, have their own cars, maybe take Uber, but I haven't seen a mop on the bus in years. And um, now, after you leave the working-class neighborhood, you end up, as we're pictured here, San Julian Street. Now, this, the, the stuff we, we're seeing here, here, all around here, is this is all new, and this is the nice skid row. This is the we're going to take care of you skid row. Um, back in the back in the good old days, um, but in the 1980s and the 1990s, um, the skid row was a, a it was not a place where you went to get taken care of by anybody, and you inevitably. Uh, when you're on the 60, you go up Santa Fe, which is now, this is really nice arts district, very expensive restaurants. You turn left on to Santa Fe, or Santa Fe to 7th Street, which is depicted here. And um, you go by a lot of SRO housing, single resident occupant. And um, it's mostly mentally ill people of 
one way or the other. If you're not mentally ill, they're not going to put you on. They're not going to put you on Seventh Street. Don't worry, you either. Um, but uh, but seven. So Seventh Street is kind of like they they just put. And I just think one day, you know what they're going to do? They're just going to go clean out. They're just going to show up with buses. And if you notice in LA, the MTA Tower, all the buses go there. Right, there's a new place to repair the buses. And then what's next to it? Jail. So in my opinion, that's why in our lifetime, and maybe in your lifetime, kids. Um, so um, the mentally ill, uh, it's, it's tragic. Uh, you know, it's tragic that they, they don't get the services they need. And what I've noticed writing the 60 is a lot of them, you'll be on the bus, they'll get on the bus, okay? And then, I don't know, wherever you went, and you come home and you get on, they're still on the bus. They're still riding that bus. Or they'll get off, you know, they'll be riding the bus and they'll get off at the hotel. And so that's about all, a lot of times they have to do. And a lot of them, like it's safer to ride the bus at night and sleep, at day, sleep in the day on 7th Street especially. So uh, those are some of my stories. I've, I've got a lot, lot of stories, but I really wanted to give you a feel for the 60. It's a working class bus. It goes from Long Beach, goes right through my hood. It goes uh, down 7th Street, past all the wackos, and then it, it's great to drop you off at the Greyhound station. It's great to drop you off at the, um, by the red line, uh, the blue line. It actually runs parallel with the blue line for a lot of, a lot of the way, uh, but it's about mm, a mile and a half, maybe two miles uh, due east of the blue line. So, hey, was that good? That's awesome. Okay.